Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all doing well and continuing to stay safe. This is going to be the first in a series called Dead Cell Subtleties, in which we're going to be taking a look at some of the nuanced aspects of this game. These will be kind of pseudo guides, kind of short-ish type of guides that aren't aimed at talking about one specific concept, but aimed at talking about more stuff that you may not have noticed initially while playing the game. You see, when you hit 4 or 5 BC, you start to notice some smaller things that aren't explicitly explained to you during the course of the game. And it's also things that you kind of start to realize implicitly in your mind over time and you start to utilize it a little bit. And so with this video, it kind of started when I was rambling on one of my runs about why I like the Telluric Shock more than the Powerful Grenade. And I then realized that there's a lot of different skills and weapons that serve similar functions, and so a follow-up question ensued. When do you use what, and what's better for certain situations? Why would I use the infantry grenade when I can use the powerful grenade? And so we're going to address this today, and the way this is going to be structured is to take two or more weapons or skills that are similar, compare them, and discuss what you can use in what situation. Keep in mind that I'm not trying to figure out which one is better or which one you should use in all situations, as we all have our different opinions and preferences. This is just me looking at some of the subtle differences between weapons that do similar things. And so if you want to watch more content like this, I like doing guides, 5BC runs with post commentary and live commentary, ranking slash tier list, random insights into the game, and of course, y'all's favorite, my Dead Cells podcast called Chaos and Chill, in which I just released the fifth episode with Twitch streamer Loot or Die. So definitely check all that stuff out, and if any of it interests you, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications, and let's get started. The first comparison that I want to talk about is one that we discussed in the intro, which is the infantry grenade versus the powerful grenade. They're both your just kind of standard grenades that do a set amount of damage, and that damage can be increased depending on the affixes, such as 60% to bleed or 80% to poison. And now you may be thinking, just take the powerful grenade because it's, you know, grenade go boom. And it's powerful and clears out mobs and does everything that the infantry grenade cannot do, so why would you ever use it? And you know, sure, that, that can be considered, but the thing about these two grenades is that they're distinctly different even though they kinda do the same thing. Infantry grenade, for example, has a shorter cooldown, while the powerful grenade has a much longer one. So if you're trying to deal with a smaller mob or against bosses, infantry grenade may be the item of choice if you have enough synergy to make it fairly powerful. And with these mobs, you essentially can use a hit and run strategy with the infantry grenade, deploying it and running away and getting some key chip damage to where your main weapon or whatever skill that you have can destroy it. Sometimes you can even knock out enemies in one go, especially smaller enemies, and with that cooldown, you're pretty much set to continue on forward. Powerful Grenade, on the other hand, works as a one-time nuke with a much larger reach. We'll talk about the comparison to Telluric Shock in just a bit, but think about it in terms of being able to hit a bunch of enemies at once, having a larger reach, and doing significant damage. And this is going to be a running theme throughout, but it really just depends on what you are trying to do with the skill that you have. Powerful Grenade, which we just discussed, also has a similar function to Telluric Shock, or as I like to call it, the Big Boy Slam. Let's think about the effects of both of these weapons and their endgame. They're both designed to clear out large mobs, and the powerful grenade has much more damage. So what makes some difference besides the base damage? Well, the powerful grenade is good if you want to stay grounded and face on mobs head on. In addition, it's good in terms of deployment, where you don't do anything crazy like you do with the Telluric Shock. Telluric Shock, on the other hand, has a weird animation and can risk you landing in weird spots. However, it clears out much more space than a powerful grenade will, and makes it a better choice when dealing with the large mob that's crowding you from either side, because powerful grenade can only hit enemies that are in front of you, while Telluric Shock can hit enemies both in front and behind you. And so, powerful grenade can also work on flying enemies, while Telluric Shock can move you away from certain enemies. Boss's powerful grenade is likely better due to its better control, and for biomes, Telluric Shock may be a better option. Wolf Trap Root Grenade and the Boyzox all root enemies. Boyzox is a ranged weapon and can be called back, but it roots enemies and can serve as an important support weapon. Wolf Trap can trap two enemies at once and is generally far more reliable with rooting. Root Grenade does not last as long as either the Wolf Trap or Boyzox, but also does more damage over time than both of them. 
Wolf Trap is better for singular enemies or a couple enemies due to only having the two traps, the caveat being that you can physically trap them for a while. Boy's Axe can only root one enemy, and the Root Grenade can root as many enemies as what falls within its range, meaning that the possibilities are endless. Also worth it to note that the Boy's Axe is the only one of the three that works on Giant, as the other two basically do nothing. Wolf Trap can utilize the Generates a Toxic Cloud affix that's pretty common, while the Root Grenade and Boy's Axe require a rare or starred affix to do so. So this is a bit of a bizarre comparison because they're all inherently different, right? And they all do different things just when you look at it. And what I really mean to say with this comparison is that they all essentially end up doing the same thing, which is applying bleed damage while the Corrosive Cloud does do additional poison damage, but they all bleed at the end of the day. And it's important to note that Cleaver and Knife Dance can also get poisoned through various affixes. And so the difference here lies in the effectiveness in its use. Cleaver is a stationary trap that causes bleed, so it's slower but lasts fairly long. Knife Dance lasts a very short amount of time but also deploys much quicker and gets more bleed stacks at once. Corrosive Cloud lasts the longest but has the slowest cooldown. Corrosive Cloud in addition to bleed and poison also can have an additional function when on S rank items, Electrocution, which is pretty much always there with S rank items. Cleaver is probably the best against most bosses sans giant, Knife Dance is good for singular problematic enemies or bosses like Giant or Inconjectivus and pretty much any boss in the game, which aren't always affected by Cleaver. Corrosive Cloud is the most consistent, but also has a very slow effect, and it's best to use this more so for trying to clear out mobs or get a consistent DOT status on boss. So it's really dependent on the type of use with these three skills, and they're all effective in their own different ways. A not often debated topic is Pyrotechnics and Fire Blast, which essentially do the same thing with the same crit condition. They both cause fire, they both crit in oil, and the crits cause burning oil. They both, however, have completely different utilizations. Pyrotechnics damage rests on the last hit of its 4 hit combo, which ends up doing much more damage than the Fire Blast. In that 3 seconds that it takes for Pyrotechnics to finish its combo, it'll do more damage than the Fire Blast on a singular enemy. However, Fire Blast is far more efficient with mob management and can attack as many enemies as exists within its range. Fire Blast is more for dot builds, and while Pyrotechnics can be used in that context, it's typically more in a traditional ranged tactics base. Other thing to note is that Fire Blast is part brutality, which can give it some much needed support on a build that may need fire. The last we're going to be talking about is Assassin Stagger vs Blowgun. Both do crits when behind enemies and do trivial damage when in front. Both also tend to heavily rely on phaser because you'll end up behind enemies. Blowgun has a higher DPS for crits while Assassin Stagger has a faster combo and does more damage up front and in addition Blowgun also auto targets enemies. It also has limited ammo and requires a method to get that ammo back. The key thing here is deployment. Assassin's Dagger is slower initially than Blowgun but does more hits over time due to its fast nature. Blowgun has a quicker deployment but is slower over time. Assassin's Dagger is also a melee weapon which means that you cannot really hit enemies like Ground Shakers and Thornies from behind and Blowgun can. So those are just some of the differences between those two. And that is going to wrap it up for me today folks. And the purpose of this video, again, is just not to say which weapon or skill is better as a whole. I have my own separate thoughts on that, but it was really just to show you that items that have the same goal can end up being used entirely differently. So when you're trying to come up with your best possible build, consider if a Corrosive Cloud would be better, or if Knife Dance is the better option. Do you want a Fire Grenade or a Flame Turd? Or do you want to run both to deal with different situations? It's all dependent on what you're trying to achieve and how you want to get there. For example, if you have Tranquility as a mutation, does it make more sense to run an Assassin's Dagger or a Blowgun? And what about Initiative? So knowing what you're running and how much you can maximize that is one of the core elements to succeeding in Dead Cells, and in addition, understanding the subtleties of weapons and skills will help you become more successful. So thank you all so much for joining me today, I really appreciate you taking time out of your days to watch my content, leave a like and subscribe for more Dead Cells guides, runs and any other commentaries that I would like to do, and if you're wondering what the next subtle thing about Dead Cells I'm going to talk about is, well, you're going to have to stay tuned to find out. Thank you all again, and I'll see you next time, 
Have a great night and stay safe out there.